Let's move on to the uh, global economy. Uh, Vince Cable, just listening to r reports on Sky and elsewhere this morning, this picture that the world economy is moving ahead and the UK is being left behind, is, is that fair? Because, after all, growth is also being revised up in this country. Well, it's accurate. I mean, the, the point they're making is that in our kind of uncertain kind of Brexit phase, um, you know, the British economy hasn't collapsed, for sure, uh, but it is underperforming relative to what it could do. Uh, we're talking about, you know, one, one and a half percent growth. It, consumer spending is not as strong as you could expect it, and that's reflected in the announcement of Jaguar Land Rover. The cutbacks in production that are taking place at Halewood was announced overnight. And you have a general dampening effect on investment. But I mean, essentially what companies are doing, they're investing for necessary maintenance and repair, but the big decisions are not being made and they will not be made for several years. Well, that's not a view I share. We're talking about forecasts here. Let's look at the reality of the 18 months after Brexit. This time last year, we were sitting here with forecast growth of around about 1%. Actual growth for 2017 was near a 2%, about 1.8%, which is around about the level of growth in the six months before the referendum. Now, Vince mentioned investment. We've seen Toyota invest £240 million in a new car plant in Derbyshire. We've seen Nissan announcing plans to increase their production at their um, Sunderland plant by 20%. Last year, we saw eight-year high record manufacturing. We've seen unemployment, 4.3%. That's a 43-year low, lower than it's ever been during my lifetime. And since Brexit, uh, the Brexit vote, our economy has created half a million new jobs. And that's despite all of the predictions by um, the doom mongers before the referendum. And I was, you know, I was, I was, I voted Remain. So I was um, somewhat in that camp. And they were predicting, you know, immediate economic consequences. And I mean, Vince himself made some comments, um, not quite as extreme as George Osborne's, but some along those lines. And that, that hasn't happened. The economy remains strong, half a million new jobs. What? then lies behind Britain's relatively weak performance. Well, I think if you measure... So the, the global upturn in growth has really happened in the last sort of four to six months. And I think you've got to be very careful about drawing economic conclusions from very short sets of data running over sort of three to six months. If you take a long-term view, look at the UK's performance compared to the Eurozone. People said back in 1999, if we didn't join the Eurozone, um, it would all be a complete catastrophe. Well, in the 19 years since then, our economy has grown by 40%. The Eurozone economy has grown by 28%. So if you take a long-term view, um, you know, we are doing well. And as I say, the 1.8% growth last year is in line with the six months prior to the referendum. I mean, we in Italy are at the bottom of performance yeah. of, the, of the G7, right. for example. Now, what do yeah, you in the last few months, in yeah. the last few yeah. months. Yeah. But you've got to take a longer-term no, view. We're, we're, we're talking about, you know, the direction of travel, if you like. I mean, what, what do you think explains uh, Britain relative lagging? Well, there are deep underlying problems, and this productivity problem... Not, not to, related to the whole but Brexit. But certainly Brexit. related to Brexit. I mean, the one big thing that happened, and the one big knock to the economy, was the devaluation. Now, the devaluation has a, had an upside, which is it's made exporting more profitable, and that explains partly the, the, the positive manufacturing results, together with the pull effect from the rest of the economy. But the one big thing that the devaluation did was it cut living standards last year, prices went up, wages didn't, uh, and that's clearly affected the way consumers behave. I mean, it, mm. it, the Brit Britain is not booming. I mean, we're bumping along. Yeah. It's not in recession. Yeah. It's not in a disastrous situation. But it's hardly well, as forecast as forecast with by much some of the rest of the world. I mean, <laughs> do, you, do you accept that Project Fear was completely wrong? I mean, yes. I mean, there, there was or, some, or is it just there delayed some, there until we actually do stories leave. that were clearly cl clearly wrong? But of course, we you know we haven't left. We don't know the basis on which we will leave. Right. Indeed, if we leave. Uh, and it may be that if there is an orderly process of transition that the effects will be felt very gradually now, do, do and slowly over a long period of time. You know, ministers, not just the, the opposition or the public, are crying out for more spending on the health service, uh, on the army, on the police. Is that what we need now? Do we need a government stimulus, even if that means uh, increasing taxation? Well, I'm certainly not in favour of increasing taxation because increasing taxation is is a break. Is it one more borrowing either? It's a break on economic growth. What we need are responsibly run public finances. We've got that. We've elim eliminated over three quarters of Labour's deficit, and of course the coalition played a role in that. What we need is a strong economy, creating jobs. That's how we create the cash to fund the NHS. And let's not forget, NHS funding is at a all-time record level: 125 billion pounds a year.
What do you think? Anybody Mr. can say, let's spend more money on the NHS. The question is, are you willing to face up to paying for it? I mean, that's why we argue that penny on income tax yeah. roughly brings in yeah. the five I mean, that's a policy, billion. but you think we should be doing that now? I think we should, yes. I mean, there is a longer term question of the sustainability of the funding of the NHS and I think that's why unfortunately I think Theresa May has made a mistake by not willing to talk to other parties. As long as this is a political bum fight the NHS is not going to function properly. We need to get a proper formula with a tax that's effectively earmarked, even the former permanent secretary for the Treasury acknowledges that now and put it on a, on a proper footing. Okay, thank you both thank very you. much indeed.